filmed this once and forgot to record. <laughs> Gaming keyboards have honestly paired in comparison to what these smaller designers can produce in small runs. I am from the custom keyboard community and we are nerds and gatekeepers. Not all of us, hopefully not me, but today we're looking at the ASUS RAW Claymore 2 and let's see what it can offer. So what ASUS is doing is something I've never seen before in customs, which is having a TKL, but also having it able to be fused with a numpad. Southpaw full size. Pretty crazy, huh? A removable numpad, hot swappable either side in a completely wireless keyboard. Do you know Southpaw? You need to know Southpaw. It's the go to layout 100%. This video is sponsored by ASUS, but my opinion is always my own. This keyboard had a lot of cool things going on, but a lot of odd design choices. So let's get into it. Let's look at the keyboard here, but let's just uh, pop this off. Let's get these feet on. Looks like a regular gaming keyboard. You may think I'm some elitist that thinks RGB is for children, but you'd be wrong. I love my light-up keyboard and I love my light-up PC. Joking aside, it's a standard 6.25U-ish bottom row layout with a function key full size form factor that can transform. I do say ish because even if it's 6.25, you can't even use your own keycaps. It's using proprietary optical switches that uh, mount to keycaps in a specific way. We'll get more into that in a moment. Cool features in your keyboard include a fancy RGB, an extra RGB battery indicator up here, and indicator LEDs for everything you may want. The indicator is clutch because I've used a handful of wireless keyboards and I have no idea how much battery life is left. This is perky RGB. The flat profile of the keyboard may look cheaper than custom since it's not high profile, but it does let the perky RGB bounce back a little onto the silver top case or mid grade top case. The numpad has four custom macro buttons. Let's just look at it here. Pretty satisfying click. And the numpad as well as the keyboard is programmable via their proprietary software. So you can probably get by with not having a macro pad and just using these four buttons or using the numpad itself. This will be useful for dedicating to opening software or controlling scenes while streaming. On my stream deck, which has 32 keys, I honestly only use about five of them to control scenes. It's kind of a waste, but uh, bigger is better, right? In the default configuration, you have mute, previous, next, and pause play. Now let's dive into the software. I trust this software more than its competitors. You can sync up the RGB to your PC if you wish, but I don't have any other ASUS hardware in my setup. One cool thing about this keyboard is that the changes you make are saved onto the onboard memory. This means that you don't have to worry about downloading the software on every computer that you use. On the numpad itself, the volume wheel is a nice touch, but in its standard configuration, which is numpad on the right, which I'll show you right now, real time, Oh God, doing it in the air is kind of hard. Real time. There you go, it's connected, right? In the default configuration, you have your numpad on the right side, which is not my ideal location because your hand's on your mouse and the left hand is pretty far from the numpad because it's on the left side of the keyboard. It really breaks your flow to control the media with your right hand because you're probably doing fancy business things with your mouse hand, right? We're playing games, right? <laughs> So ideally, you want to pop the left side open, pop, pop, there you go. So now your left hand is over here, this is really hard to do backwards guys, and you can just reach over and you have your media control, your volume control, and your mouse hand stays on the mouse. So very useful in gaming and even useful when you're just trying to get in the zone and keep working. And as you can tell, it's lighting up without being plugged in. The main draw is wireless. It's dongle wireless, so it doesn't have the fancy Bluetooth 5, but it's been pretty reliable in games. In terms of games, we don't really want a full size for that, right? Well, with a full size like this, it's really just a TK though, right? There's no numpad over here taking up space. So your mouse hand got some space to work, all right? And if you don't like the footprint on the table, maybe you want to put some snackies on the left side, you just pop this open. Now you got a regular TKL. Easy, it's a transforming keyboard. Make sure you put these things back on so there's no dust that gets into the little connector. And in terms of the Southpaw configuration where the numpad is on the left side, I know it's gonna take a little bit of adjustment because I know most people aren't used to having the numpad on the left side, but I will say once you get used to it, it'll be more productive. Everyone that has started using Southpaw numpad has always said, hey, this is the best thing. Like. Being able to keep your hand on the mouse and then use your other hand for numpad makes you more productive, okay? And if you're not an Excel worker or an accountant or something like that, you can use the software and configure the numpad to do whatever you want. There's full functionality and all of it's gonna be saved on the onboard memory. And make your numpad a macro pad and it's removable. So 
when you're working, let's say in Adobe Premiere, you got some macros set up, you can actually connect the numpad, work with it. And when you're done, you wanna just chill, unplug it, put it away, and you got some more desk space. Put your bowl of ramen, eat while playing games or watching some Twitch streams. You gotta make sure you watch me on Twitch and even win. I stream on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. PT. Check me out. And it's just more productive to have a numpad. Once I got to custom mechanical keyboards, I only use 60% to 65%. And it's honestly less efficient, but I started getting into the aesthetics. Has small keyboard, pretty keycaps, and I'll work around it. Most people, if they're actually trying to be productive or have a workflow that they're used to, maybe don't want to deal with that. And if you go into these long work sessions, you need some comfort, right? Here's a soft faux leather wrist rest and it's back oh nice little value add in the wired mode the keyboard has wired pass through you can see it right there so what's cool about that is if you have another device like me i have a stream deck i have a Kanta u2 speaker you can actually connect it to the keyboard and not have another cable run all the way to your computer so if you're stuck with wires might as well get some value out of it and connect it to the keyboard itself in terms of performance when we talk about gaming keyboards performance is on top of mind i honestly believe that most of us do not compete at a level where response times matter. Optical switches are supposed to actuate faster than their Cherry MX brothers that have a regular leaf in the switch, but I haven't really felt anything. I haven't felt that it's slower, faster. When I die in a game, it's probably because of user error. The proprietary optical switches here come with a huge LED in the middle and really helps the RGB shine and it pops and it's cool and it's great. But with the proprietary switch, it has proprietary keycaps and they're not mounted very well it's just four little nubs and uh, just taking out the keycap twice and broke one of the nubs i will have to glue this back and that's not great but the way it does mount is actually pretty stable there's not a lot of stem wobble in there at all so there's been a lot of critique of my favorite switch in custom keyboards which is the god on ink there's a lot of wobble some people don't like that i don't care but it's there this is a stable switch and because it's proprietary you cannot use your gmk keycaps here sorry not sure if the optical switch design with all around illumination was worth making the keycap mounting so weak restricting the ability to use aftermarket keycaps and i don't even know if they ever release other options for keycaps if i'd recommend using them because it's not a great experience to take it off and put it back on in terms of sound the sound of this keyboard is not horrible Shift is weak. The red switches are smoother than stock Cherry MX Reds. The stabilizers, well, because these switches are proprietary, so are the stabilizers. And they're what you expect. In the stock form, there is definitely rattle. Not a huge amount, but definitely hard to swallow for a board at this price. We'll talk about the price in a minute. The mechanism for the keycap to secure to the stabilizer looks a bit flimsy as well. I would love to see them really dig into the durability testing of the keycaps because it's proprietary switches and proprietary stabilizers and proprietary keycaps. Totally usable with a wee bit of elbow grease and actual grease. Now the price. Uh, this keyboard is a high tier pre-built gaming keyboard and it comes with the price that you expect. I personally owned a gaming pre-built before in the Corsair K70 Lux. It was a few years back and it was $160 and $140 on sale. That felt like a tank to me. Heavy, RGB, included a wrist rest. Little did I know that I would get deep into the mechanical keyboard hobby and spend way more than $160. But this Asus ROG Claymore 2 is $270. That's quite a doozy, for sure. You could justify this as having a regular 80% keyboard, a Southpaw full-size, and a regular full-size all-in-one. And the RGB, the wireless, the volume wheel, the optical switches. Yeah, the optical switch is probably adding to the price of this because it's new technology. I don't know if it's mature enough yet for us to really invest into these products, but it is there, it is new. If you wanna be on the cutting edge, probably the best pre-built companies have to offer at this point for the gaming kind of. In terms of sound and feel, it's losing a few marks there for me, but it's cool to experience and having the ability to switch back and forth between Southpaw and regular for numpad is great because there's not really another option for that. Even in my journey as a custom keyboard enthusiast, I've only had one Southpaw keyboard and I was only willing to do that because the keyboard was fully made out of FR4 and was like $100. Cool to try out, but once I got tired of that or once I didn't like it, then 
what do I do with that? It's just gone. Whereas this, you can try it out sometimes. Maybe try and get to used to the Southpaw, and if you really do like it, you can get a keyboard that is specifically Southpaw. But other than that, thanks Asus for sponsoring this video. It's been a great experience to try this out. It's really cool and I like the technology that's in it. And I'm sure there's going to be people out there that are really interested in the Asus kind of syncing, the Asus aesthetic, the Asus hardware, and are willing to buy this keyboard. It's not the worst keyboard. It's just not my taste, but the RGB is pretty cool. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.